Welcome back. I'm Kevin, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through what I did to build a monitor switching uh, device for my studio. Um, what's important to learn out of this is not so much that how I soldered things, but really around the design and making sure that you understand that I worked through the design so much so that I've got a Rev 1, which I'll walk you through here in a bit, but I also have a Rev 2 that I'll walk you through here in this video. Um, that's the current model that I have in play. It's the one that's right here. Um, works really, really great. I like it a lot. Um, but there's one more thing that I want to do, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the Rev 3, which I'll do in a later video. So with that in mind, let's get into this. For this build, I use the SoundTech switching unit, it's no longer in production, the TS6 for the chassis. The reason for that is it gives me 12 really well-placed outputs on the back of the unit. So in disassembling the TS6, its chassis is comprised of a lot of small torque uh, screws. So just simply uh, taking those out along the top is a great way of doing that. Make sure you get the two on each side of the unit uh, and then you'll be able to pull off the top. Looking inside the TS6, you can see the six red input jacks flowing to the switch and then out through the yellow jacks. To remove the old mono jacks, I used a crescent wrench to take off the jack nuts. That freed up all the different jacks along the back that have been bussed together with a wire for the ground. We'll talk about that a little bit later on, but I just want to make sure you understand how to get these things out of the back of the unit. To remove the switch, there's two screws on the front of the switch, and then there's two on the inside. Now that you've removed the screws from the switch, you should be able to pull that back through the front panel, and then the harness will pull the back jacks out of their openings. You should then be able to remove the whole harness. Let's take out the screws from the back panel. Now that we've removed the screws, let's flip over the back panel and start to insert the new tip ring and sleeve jacks that we're going to use in the new monitor switch. Now let's remove the screws from the front panel. Flipping the panel over and reattaching it with the screws gives us a new clean, fresh panel face. So now let's talk about the Rev1 circuit diagram. Starting with a left and right tip ring and sleeve jack, and spread them out across six separate outputs. To do that, we need a three position, four conductor switch. We'll use that switch to direct the signals to the stereo pairs A, B, and C. This part can be complicated, but it's important to remember that each input leg can be redirected to three separate output legs. I wish I could show you the compelling video of me making all these solder joints. However, I've lost the video, but let's continue on. To place my switch, I chose the left side of the front panel. It's up to you to decide where you want to place yours. To do that, I drilled a hole in the front panel and then mounted the switch.
So with Rev2, I want to make a 3x3 three three switch. That's three inputs into three separate outputs. So to do that, we're going to basically take the existing switch and mirror it. We're going to disconnect the two inputs, and then we're going to add the four-pole, three-position switch, and then the six inputs. Then what we're going to do is connect the inputs to the switch. So what we end up with is six inputs going through two switches. Those are four pole, three position switches, then being routed to the six outputs. So this is how it looks inside of the switch. You'll notice the back input to the two switches up front and then to the outputs. So I'm gonna start with the output jacks. Notice the cabling goes to the first switch, which is the output switch. Then there's the jumpers to the input switch, which then the cabling goes to the input jacks. Looking at the output jacks, you'll notice the ground bus and the color coding for each leads from the switches. The switch wiring is the most complicated, so you'll want to make sure that you color code each lead to the right connection so you don't confuse anything or cross your wires. No pun intended. On the input jack, you'll notice the same ground bus plus the color coding for each lead. Reassembling the switch is quite simple. Place the top on the unit and then replace all the screws around the sides, front and back. For my switch knobs, I chose the old school chicken head pointer switches because I like that old school feel. Also, they sound great as a click and snap. Gonna select the DX5, I'm going to choose the 32SC and I'm going to hit play. Change it to the T7B. Turn it off. to SC is off, back on, hit pause. Now I'm going to jump over into uh, the, the uh, 24C and I'm going to switch that to 24C and hit play. All right, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, I know that there's a lot of technology and terms and not everyone has access to these things, but I wanna make sure that you guys have the ability to learn and be inspired to go investigate some new things. You don't always have to buy something, you can always build something too. So I wanted you to be inspired by this and I hope you guys are. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, more videos on REW and the different graphs are in the works and should be posting over the next couple of weeks. Um, there'll be more uh, videos on gear, some things I've been building on my own, some things that are just helpful around the studio that I want to share with you. Um, and then lastly, if you enjoyed this, I'd appreciate you hit the like button. But um, more importantly, um, if you're having fun with this and you want to learn more, go ahead and subscribe and you'll be notified when um, I post a new video. So until next time, thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.